If you aren't subscribed to the Let's Get Into It podcast, then you're only getting half the tea. For longer videos, deep dives, and of course, more of me, subscribe to the Let's Get Into It podcast listed in the description below. Taylor Swift has recorded a two hour long album and she is not holding back, specifically when it comes to Kim Kardashian. Headlines read Taylor Swift has humiliated Kim Kardashian with the tortured poets department diss track, Thank You Amy. But reality star will not fire back over fears of furious attacks from singers fans. I think we can all acknowledge that Taylor Swift is at a high right now. And if she does a diss track on you, you better be worried. Even if you are Kim Kardashian. Reports claim that Taylor Swift has humiliated Kim Kardashian by reigniting their feud with the release of an apparent diss track. Fans are describing this as the ultimate F you. Now this album that Taylor just released is impressive because it has double the amount of songs that people were anticipating. And in my opinion, this song titled Thank You Amy is definitely about Kim. I mean, look at how the wording is spelled. Amy isn't A-M-Y, it has an I-M, and that's because she wanted to capitalize K. I am in that song, Kim. So if we didn't know it was about Kim Kardashian, we knew for sure. Her track, Thank You Amy, centers on Taylor's apparent dislike for a mean school girl she refers to as Amy, who fans believe is actually Kim as Taylor confirms she changed the name of the woman in question. So this is definitely Taylor Swift's revenge song on Kim. Taylor Swift has written a song with Kim Kardashian's name in the title. And in the song, Taylor sings that sometimes Taylor's mom Mom wishes Kim Kardashian was dead. The title of the song is Thank You Amy with three letters capitalized that spell out Kim. No one has used the name Amy as creative as this since Britney Spears said, if you see Kami. This song is fucking brutal and it's a story of their whole feud and how Taylor Swift will never forgive Kim Kardashian. And she paints Kim out to be equivalent to a high school bully who's evil. Now, wishing death upon someone is pretty intense, but keep in mind their feud was tragic. We have a video breaking it down and it was brutal. And one line Taylor sings, there's a bronze spray tanned statue of you and a plaque underneath it that threatens to push me down the stairs at our school. All that time you were throwing punches, I was building something and I can't forgive the way you made me feel. Screamed F you Amy to the night sky as the blood was gushing, but I can't forget the way you made me Heel. Taylor goes on to add, and it wasn't a fair fight or a clean kill. Each time that Amy, <clears throat> Kim, stomped across my grave and she wrote headlines in the local paper, laughing at each baby step I take. So she's talking about Kim creating these rumors, saying these things about her, rewriting the narrative and being good at it. Kind of like a mean girl would be at high school. You know, she knows how to be mean. She's skilled at it. And Taylor didn't know what to do. When I think of my hometown, I think of a bronze spray tan statue of you with a plaque underneath it that threatens to push me down the stairs at school. This could be referencing when Kanye did a revenge porn music video with naked statues of everyone and Kim's was all nice and spray tan and Taylor looked very gaunt. Then Taylor sings, it wasn't a fair fight or a clean kill every time Amy stomped across my grave. And she'd write headlines in the local paper laughing at every baby step I take. That can be a reference to how Kim Kardashian has talked about Taylor in multiple papers and on her TV show over and over again, all in a very not good light. You know, just another way to play the victim. Definitely got her a lot of attention the first time. Then Taylor sings, and I've made a thousand songs that you find uncool, but I've made a legacy that you can't undo. In reference to the thousand songs that you find uncool, there's that infamous time that Kim and North's TikTok account reposted a video making fun of Taylor Swift, calling her cringe and uncool. Shout out to Patty Pop Culture. We love that he comes with the receipts. I think he's doing more long form content on YouTube, so I will link his channel in the description below. But Taylor seems to reference Kim's 10 year old daughter, Northwest, dancing to her 2014 single, Shake It Off on TikTok back in January, finding it ironic as the song is about you. Which is definitely big of Taylor to say that that song, Shake It Off, is about Kim and how she had to essentially shake off what Kim had done to her, the lies that she had spread. She couldn't fight anymore and and she moved on. She sings, and so I changed your name and any real defining clues. And one day your kid comes home singing a song that only us two know is about you. Essentially saying that now Northwest, Kim's daughter, is consuming Taylor and her content and not even realizing that, you know, her mother, her own mother, Kim Kardashian, was the one to put her through this hell. Taylor sings, and one day your kid will come home singing a song that only us two know is about you. 
Like Kim and North have literally danced to You Need to Calm Down and the lyrics are snakes and stones never broke my bones. But Kim, you're the one who called her a snake to try to end her career. But in the end, just like she did in her Time article, she acknowledges that without the trials and tribulations Kim put her through, she wouldn't have built a stronger rapport and ultimately a stronger, more accomplished career. So she finishes the song by saying, and when I count my stars, there's a moment of truth. There wouldn't be all this if there'd never been you. So thank you, Amy. But don't try that shit again. It does pain me to see these two of the most famous women in the world who are extremely accomplished in their businesses and in media and in world building and fan building have to be enemies because of a line drawn in the sand by a man in a war that they were against each other in. It just makes me sad and maybe in another life they could have been friends. I really hope Kim hears this song so the situation can take another lap around her conscious and maybe she'll actually feel bad and reach out and apologize. Now, up until this point, I thought that this feud was over. The pair appeared to have brought an end to their feud, but in an interview with Rolling Stone, Taylor noted that this was far from the case. Taylor said, I'm standing in an audience with my arm around his wife and this chill ran through my body, she recalled. She said, I realized he's so two-faced, talking about Kanye, that he wants to be nice to me behind the scenes, but then he wants to look cool, get up in front of everyone and talk crap. And I was so upset. He wanted me to come talk to him after the event in his dressing room, and I wouldn't go. Fans also suggested that a second song, Cassandra, could be about Kim Kardashian, owning to multiple references to snakes, because essentially when Kim did send a hate mob to Taylor, they were all leaving snake emojis. You guys remember the scandal between Kanye and Taylor and Kim Kardashian and this recorded phone call that Kim Kardashian released on Snapchat? Well, many people believe that in this song, Cassandra, that Taylor is Cassandra, and it references The Call, which are alluding to the phone call between the singer and Kanye, which Kim secretly recorded and posted online. This added an explosive new level to their feud. Kanye shocked the internet when, in 2016, he released his song Famous, which featured vulgar lyrics like, I feel like me and Taylor Swift might still have sex. Why? Because I made that B word famous. Kanye had furiously defended himself in a now-deleted tweet in which he claimed Taylor thought it was funny and gave her blessings, which was not the case. Taylor's representative hit back, claiming that she was never made aware of the misogynistic message. But then Kim, of course, sparked a social media firestorm when she shared a Snapchat video of Kanye during a phone call with Taylor, which she appeared to have been asked permission to include lyrics with her name in the song. Now, this is a video that Taylor claims has been altered, but here's the clip. No, I don't think it's mean. Okay, then, what, then let me hear it. Okay. It says, um, to all my South Side niggas that know me best, I feel like Taylor Swift might owe me sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's not mean. Okay. The snake emoji had played a major role in the ongoing feud between Taylor and Kim, which started over a dispute between Taylor and Kim's ex-husband, Kanye West. Because everyone felt like Taylor had lied and Kim had proved that she was right by sharing this recording, everyone went after Taylor and put the snake emoji all over her page, which now she kind of takes ownership of. Taylor responded by saying that moment when Kanye West secretly records your phone call, then Kim posts it on the internet. She wrote before asking, where's the video of Kanye telling me who's going to call me that B word in his song? Question mark. It doesn't exist because it never happened. You don't get to control someone's emotional response to being called that B word in front of the entire world. He promised to play the song for me, but he never did. While I wanted to be supportive of Kanye on the phone, call, you cannot approve of a song you haven't heard. So Taylor is not holding back. She said, being falsely painted as a liar when I was never given the full story or played any part of the song is character assassination. I would very much like to be excluded from this narrative, one that I've never been asked to be a part of since 2009 when he went on stage and took away her moment from her when she was getting that award. Taylor took a break from the limelight after this before returning in 2017 with her new single, Look What You Made Me Do, which pointed a dig at Kim and Kanye and it took aim at the trolls who furiously branded her as a snake. Oh, 
Taylor said, all I can think about was the incessant manipulative bullying I received at his hands for years. Like when Kim K orchestrated an illegally recorded snippet of a phone call to be leaked and then Scooter Braun got his two clients together to bully me online about it. Or when his client Kanye West organized a revenge P-O-R-N music video that strips my body naked. It all exploded once more in 2020 when Taylor's film Miss Americana in which she noted that she felt alone and bitter during her fallout with Kim and Kanye added that she was branded wicked and evil. Around that time, leaked footage of her call with Kanye appeared to suggest that Taylor was telling the truth about the conversation. So a little bit too late, but it did show that Taylor was honest, that she never really got any real snippet of the song or a lyric that would have insisted that she would be called a b-word days later kim kardashian posted a series of messaging claiming that taylor swift was not fully being truthful and slammed the singer for her timing of the rehashing of the feud quote to be clear the only issue i ever had around the situation was that taylor lied through her publicist who stated that kanye never called and asked for permission they clearly spoke so i let you all see that taylor's longtime publicist tree Payne quickly responded with a social media post of her own tweeting i'm taylor's publicist and this is my unedited original statement by the way when you take parts out that's editing p.s who did you guys piss off to leak that video kim then clapped back i mean they're going at it that nobody ever denied the word b was being used without her permission, adding that she felt her actions that she and Kanye took were ethical. Essentially, this conversation wasn't going anywhere. After being named Times Person of the Year back in December 2023, Taylor slammed Kim for taking her down psychologically and forcing her into hiding during their long-running feud, while subtly branding the reality star and her ex-husband Kanye West as trash. Which is funny that Taylor now has the confidence to do so. I mean, Kim is very powerful. Her family is very powerful, but I think Taylor Swift is much more powerful. Taylor continues, and this is where it gets crazy. All the time you were throwing punches, I was building something, and I can't ever forgive you for the way that you made me feel. Everyone knows my mom is a savory woman, Miss Andrea Swift, but she used to say she wishes you were dead. This is the part I love because this is the question I've always had. Why was it so easy for Kim to pretend like none of this ever happened? Taylor sings, and maybe you've reframed it in your mind, and you don't think you really beat my spirit black and blue. Because in an interview when asked about it, Kim just said, I've moved on. I think we've all moved on. Still a beef with Taylor after all that went down. No, squat. Over it. Over it. No, no, I feel like we've all moved on. Okay. But we know Taylor could never move on. Being in her time article for Person of the Year, she referred to Kim Kardashian as trash. So maybe Kim thought that they'd be over it, but clearly Taylor isn't. Kimberly has sent over her sources to the media and she does feel like the track is about her. I mean, her name is spelt out in the title. She feels like she's backed into a corner and unable to speak out out of fear that she'll be alienated by Taylor's army of devout fans true people are already spamming kim kardashian on social media taylor has humiliated kim and she knows there's nothing she could do about it kim is now backed in a corner because she knows taylor's army will destroy her if she says anything sources claim that kim is going to stay silent and hope it goes away but her friends know that this has only just started so it looks like we are getting ready for our big time feud i mean honestly I'm down for a big feud, but uh, I just, I can't see how Kimberly can come back from this. So the feud's over. Taylor won. Taylor has done a lot of diss tracks, but she's never named anyone that her songs are written for. There could be no other interpretation. This is spelt out and will last forever. The insider says that Kim is aware of the pain that she caused Taylor and she has tried hard to make amends in recent years, but she never did one thing that she really needed to all along, which was simply apologize. So with Taylor Swift releasing this long album, a very much anticipated for album, people are having a lot of mixed reactions to this Kim Kardashian diss. I've seen so many people say that Taylor Swift took it too far in her Kim Kardashian diss track. They're all saying in my video, they're like, she took it too far. Kim is a mother of four kids, a mother. And for Andrea Swift to say that she wanted her dead and getting the kids involved, that is too far. I just, first of all, those kids have been screwed from the start. Kanye West is their father. Like, have you been around for the last couple of years? Sharing their thoughts on social media, one fan described the song as the ultimate F you, while another shocked listener said, OMFG, thank you, Amy, is all about Kim Kardashian. This album is so unhinged, which I haven't been able to get through at all. I'm still listening through it. It's so long. Even Dave Portnoy tweeted, Kim Kardashian got wrecked. I need to see her kid singing a lyric about what a dirtbag her mother is. And then he like quotes her song. 
No defining clues besides capitalizing her name, I Love Taylor. One person said that this song is uh, cringe, maybe? Um, I feel like in a different way, they're cut from a similar cloth, and that's why they hate each other so much. Interesting take. Someone said, can we cancel the Kardashians already? This person wrote, so let me get this right. If this is true, it's okay for someone's mom to wish a human being was dead. Yeah, that's something I'm a little, uh, you know, caught off guard by. This person wrote that Taylor keeps playing victim. Ooh, you better watch it. This person wrote, I feel like Kim only had beef because of her reckless husband. Now they split. She owes Taylor an apology. And then this person wrote, nah, don't bring a child into it. So, ooh. It's interesting because we've got Taylor's mom, like, wishing death. We've got Northwest singing songs. Like, they're, it's getting very personal. And I, I can see Kim, like passing on responding i mean she's the queen of wanting to get attention but this is only going to get her bad attention and um taylor swift is kind of slaying it i mean i love the album so far i'm so here for it i am all for taylor swift i like this era i like this sound i loved folklore i loved evermore now i'm ready for the weekend ready for the weekend i filmed a podcast today i filmed i think three other videos and this is my fourth video the podcast takes like an hour right yeah Oh my gosh, I filmed so much today, but it's so worth it. So I can just hang out with my boyfriend tonight. <sighs> wow. Okay. Well, happy Friday, people. Unless this is up tomorrow, Saturday, but we'll try. We'll try. We'll see. Okay. Love you guys. Thank you for a million subscribers again. I ordered my plaque. So should I make a video like talking and opening the thing? What, do I, like, what, what would you guys want me to do if I did a million subscriber plaques? I feel like just sitting here and opening it's boring. Like, should we go somewhere? Should we do it somewhere else? I don't know. It'd be fun to do something else. I don't know. Should I do something with you guys? Like, you guys send in video clips and I make a montage? I don't I don't know. I need, like, a creative person. Hit me up in my email. Or if you have any other video ideas for me, you can email me. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye, guys.